it's my pleasure to join you today and uh, really looking at the new approaches to teaching and research in public health for sustainable development. And Prof. Lam uh, mentioned a series of courses that we are undertaking, uh, one of which is um, learning hubs for continuing professional development. And this is the one that I wanted to start with, just to describe a way and an approach where we can assemble lots of knowledge, intelligence, insight, and experiences in a very short space of time to help push forward our leadership and to push forward our impact towards developing, towards delivering our contribution to the sustainable development goals. And I suppose that if we are really um, confident about our system leadership, about our personal leadership and so on, that we have to continuously work on that and develop it and move forward, both individually as teams and also as a system. So learning hubs are an approach that we have been using in our public health training program here in the UK. And um, I, I have been really uh, fortunate to lead um, a, 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 a group around uh, training program director for uh, Cheshire and Merseyside, which is in the northwest of England. And the learning hubs now have developed a legacy of their own where trainees and trainers will come together to talk about the work that they're doing, share, learn and share from each other, and then subsequently reflect on it for their continuing professional development. And since um, 2020 and during the pandemic, to date, I've been the director of public health for Salford. Um, so I've taken the learning hubs approach out of the training territory and put it learning as part of our teams, as part of the way we work in creating what we call a thinking environment. And a thinking environment, you'll see that that is a registered trademark for uh, really an influential thinker uh, of her times, Nancy Klein, who produced a book about listening to, ign to ignite the human mind. And she actually said that if you take time to think and to think deeply, you will discover new collections connections and you will also unblock your your thinking in areas that you have been stuck on and what better stuck area have we been looking at other than the millennium development goals and now the sustainable development goals so my pitch to the audience today and for uh, attendees and delegates who will join some of these courses that are run at the moment by uh, queen mary's university uh, and being run um, sort of maybe in Saudi Arabia, also online, is how can we create a thinking environment for ourselves, not just for training? And that course will enable people to think about, okay, then, how much time they're spending and effort and energy that they're spending both at work and at home in terms of achieving that balance for continuing development for their own careers. And then also thinking about how do we document our reflections and how do we improve our services uh, through annual cycles of sometimes it's management work and sometimes it's continuing professional development work. But you can't do this on your own. So if you're interested to develop yourself personally, you have to develop your team with you, you have to develop your partners. Otherwise, it will be a sum negative. If you work together as teams and across systems and put in place these reflective practice and quality improvement efforts, then there would some total will be more than the sum of the parts. So that is the first course. And maybe I'll just um, highlight some of these learning objectives for that first course. And it will run over maybe five to eight hours. It can take longer. And actually from that starting point, you can take away those tools and techniques and develop your own action learning sets in your own environments, wherever you are in the world. So the basis for learning and experiential learning is this very early Kolb cycle, which has been improved and modified, but in its just most basic form. It's about taking our experiences to date and not just your own experience, but the system experiences to date. You reflect on that. You create the time to think through, for example, an active learning, active listening, uh, action learning sets. And then you take away those actions the change that you want to see happen. And that will improve your experience. And then it will again, you know, continue on that experiential learning cycle. 
many um, teachers, you know, in, uh, whether you're in teaching or whether you're training for myself, training medical colleagues, training non-medical public health, multidisciplinary clinical teams, training uh, system partners in economics, in uh, not just in health, in education and so on, you'll be familiar with this cycle, but maybe you have not reflected on it uh, yet. And so joining that course would be hugely beneficial because you would be bringing your experience as other people will bring their own. So I'll, I'll move on to another aspect then. Why are we thinking and learning? Why are we spending so much time, energy, effort, um, even money in the spaces in which we work? It's because we want to improve our leadership. We want to make an impact. We want to leave a legacy. So how can we use the experiential learning cycle towards delivering our sustainable development goals. And so you'll have a, a, an approach that is called leadership tools and techniques for public health. People from the public health, if you've been public health trained, you will be familiar with these tools, but other stakeholders in your systems may not be as familiar. So this, um, this training will enable you to reflect on your own leadership, but also for your partners to join you on such a leadership uh, development uh, opportunity and for them to reflect on their system leadership as well. So with the higher purpose of delivering sustainable development goals, what does public health have to tell us, public health for sustainable development? And so um, this um, training or this uh, development opportunity allows you to reflect on both your strengths and your development areas. It allows you to, to use tools like logical planning, like strategic planning, transformational shifts, quality improvement. And one of the really key ones is stakeholder analysis, because I don't think we do enough of that. We don't put ourselves in the shoes of our partners. We don't put ourselves in the shoes of our service users. And of course, I should mention root cause analysis for things that go wrong. And many of us will have our near miss rec records, our incident registers, our investigations. But the root cause analysis is a way in which you can arrive at why something happened, what are all the contributory factors that led to that incident. Of course, there are other things that we need to do if we are going to deliver the sustainable development goals. We should be tracking our work on tackling health inequalities. We should be thinking ahead of the unintended consequences of our decisions. So if you're interested in looking at that and you know, really challenging yourself, challenging your assumptions and challenging the system risks, I think this is a development opportunity that you would benefit from yourself and your teams. And then how does that apply to a specific area like women's health, for example? And this is a, another attempt to reach a different audience of, for example, um, working in the maternal health field, working in the child health sphere, uh, early neonatal sphere. And we know there are specific uh, millennium development goals that were around mort maternal mortality and infant mortality. And that they've, uh, we weren't able to really achieve those in isolation. What we need and the world and UNICEF and all of our world partners WAST are telling us is that you can only achieve the sustainable development goals if you work to collaboratively in a multidisciplinary way. So how can we use a learning hub approach and leadership skills, tools and techniques to apply them to women's reproductive health? Of course, we can apply the same to uh, education for women. You can uh, uh, apply the same for youth championship. There are many aspects of multidisciplinary working that will fulfill the sustainable development goals. So just one of the first examples we've applied this work to is in women's reproductive health, trying to chart our experience from the Millennium Development Goals. Can we think of that? Can we reflect on that? Can we act on it and execute a change? So, in this development opportunity for people who are interested in women's reproductive health or also interested in men's reproductive health or the role of husbands in women's reproductive health and the role of grandparents and the role of parents in women's reproductive health, then this is a development opportunity for you. And the way we um, approach this is by putting ourselves in their shoes. When you an assess what different partners want to achieve, you find yourself that you're pushing offers to women and their families. Take up family planning. Why haven't you taken up family planning? You know, take up our um, antenatal care. Why haven't you taken up our antenatal care? And we keep getting stuck on these really 
uh, hard issues, but they become easier when you put yourself in their shoes and you understand that the reason why antenatal care hasn't featured so much is because, is because the early detection of pregnancy wasn't in place. So by using root cause analysis in this sphere, you'll ask yourself the questions, the five whys, why are women not attending? Why is pregnancy not detected uh, early? And then you take that back. Why are, uh, you find that one of the contributors is that why are women not using family planning? So by using the five whys in this development opportunity and using the stakeholder analysis, you'll be able to tackle some dilemmas that have faced us for some time around fertility and infertility, some new emerging issues around the menopause and recognition of the menopause in our workplaces. And then looking at how do we deliver safe women's health clinics in the clinic setting. So this is an open offer, really, where we have uh, an experiential learning cycle of what did we experience and learn from the Millennium Development Goals. And we reflect and create the time to think and new ways of working sustainable development goals. And I, I'm quite happy to take questions on these particular um, development opportunities. I'm also happy to take questions on the tools and techniques that will be explored in those development opportunities. So uh, I'll leave it there and uh, I'll, I'll hand over to Prof. Allam. Thank you very much. So please remember, if we all help and do a little bit, it will make a big difference.